Good evening, good evening. Uh, greet everyone uh, who is tuned in uh, on this day. Blessings to everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, I think it's only befitting for us to begin uh, with, and uh, maybe let, let me first acknowledge and, and thank uh, Pastor Sepo Apane for inviting me to be on this platform. Uh, I thank him for extending the invitation to me. Uh, it's one of the things that I'd, I'd like doing. I hope today, if we don't achieve anything else, uh, if we can just achieve one thing, just one person who would who would gain something positive, one family, that uh, this presentation can change the outlook of their own financial planning. So today I've been invited to to talk to the subject of the importance of financial planning. Uh, this is this this is basically it could be for an individual, could be for a family, it could be for a business. Uh, but as I unpack the importance of financial planning, uh, I, I will 
but I must note that uh, this is not financial advice. Uh, all that will be shared here is only suitable when it is it is shared and done specifically to one's needs. So, uh, you know, those disclaimers of this is a recorded line and all those things. Right now, I'm not going to be giving advice. I've been given uh, about 45 minutes to, to take us through. I'll see how we do. And I do have a presentation uh, to share with us uh, that will guide our conversation over the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Let me just go to my presentation and do this. Right. I think I've mentioned the topic already, uh, the importance of financial planning uh, done by the stewardship corner, the Department of, of Stewardship of the Trans Orange Conference of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. I think it's befitting to to perhaps introduce the person that will that will, that is actually doing the introduction, uh, and I'll do it in this manner. My name is Yanga Duma. Uh, I'm the CEO and key individual of a company called If Insurance Intermediary. Uh, I'm a former banker. I uh, worked with Standard Bank for about four years uh, in the business banking division. I hold the, the following qualifications, a national diploma in internal auditing and a BTEC in internal auditing, particularly to financial services. Uh, I hold a postgraduate uh, in qualification in financial planning from the University of Free State. And I also hold a postgraduate in estate planning and trust administration, also from the University of Free State. In this year, I'll be sitting for my board exams uh, to be a certified, certified financial planner. Uh, do wish me luck, uh, but I think the importance of this, more than anything else, to show it's not to to show accolades or anything else, but it is to really uh, nudge a bit of a point of what is happening within the financial services. The financial services previously has not been a professional uh, industry where one can say this is the particular qualification that you need to be able to, one, give advice to people. And the industry is moving away from that where everyone can be able to be part of the industry and, and, and do anything as per those previous times. So I, I really display this to really say also, whenever you think financial planning, also think of what is the qualification? What is the experience of the person that you will go seek this kind of professional service, uh, professional service from, right? So moving right along, I think at first, what is financial planning? Financial planning, we, we can really say it's a step-by-step -step process, which has a, an approach that will meet one's life goals. It's a financial plan, that acts as a guide throughout your life journey. You keep on going to revisit this financial plan, understanding that everyone is in a different life stage. Each of our life stages require a different financial plan. For instance, as a 20 year old, there's a different financial plan. There are different things that you need to be thinking about. But as you mature into a younger professional, there are different considerations that you need to be making and there are different plans that you should also be making. And then we go into the more matured ages, 40 years and above. There are different, that's a different journey on its own. So is the financial planning of that journey. In fact, in your 30s, you long should be planning your financial goals for your 40s and your life going forward. Essentially, uh, financial planning helps one to control their income, their expenses, and investments so that they can be able to manage their own money and achieve their own goals. And lastly, maybe not least, financial planning helps one to better prepare for most eventualities that life can bring. So when you are financially prepared, when you've thought of different scenarios of the what ifs, what could happen, and you've consulted a professional that will really advise you around your own life stage. If you're a business person, they will say, uh, 
these are the considerations that your financial plan should have. If you're a parent, these are the considerations that your financial plan should, it really hinges. So a financial plan differs from a person to person and particularly uh, the life stage that each of us are at. And of course, the outlook of how we want to live our lives, how we want it to end as well. You know, what is my end in mind? It, it, it's all defined by one's financial plan. Right, of course, when you when you are doing financial planning, there is a process that is that is followed that that guides. Why is it important that we we mention the process uh, that is followed? We come from an era, and we must we must accept this. We come from an era where there were people who were just pushing products. It was all about product, and there would be one page. And you must find yourself within this page. They say, hmm, here is the page. Here is the price of which that is not financial planning. That is just product pushing. Financial planning. With it, I'll just sum up the six stages that financial planning has or it, it guides. It can be more, but critically, these are the stages that are entailed within the financial planning process. One client engagement it is important that a client is engaged in terms of what is it that they need who is the client what life stage is this client what are the objectives of the client gone are the days where we can we can really just phone and do something over a call center without reaching understanding so Step number one, that engagement is critical. And as you engage as a client in the financial planning process, there needs to be trust, there needs to be reliability, and there needs to be clear experience. Number two, you, you have met with a professional, then they will go into a journey of taking down your personal information. Other than personal information, this is a process of really opening up. What are your goals? What makes up the person that you are? Uh, what is it that defines you? Are you a believer in education? Uh, do you have kids? Uh, what is your family structure? How are you married? Uh, are you married in community of property or out of community of property with an, an ANC? How, how is your structure? Because all those things are actually critical. In, in terms of your financial plan. Are you employed? Uh, who employs you? Are you an employer? That whole kind, do you have a bond? Do you have vehicles? What is the level of your debt? What is your income? What is your health status? Have you previously had uh, illnesses that we might need to look at? So in, in, in collecting that information, that conversation, which needs to be true, honest, and full disclosure. So, 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 so that information then being collected, and num number three, then in the financial planning process, the planner would then take this information, go analyze it, and and really make sense and have a picture of your life and what you need to achieve. If in that in that engagement you have mentioned that you would like to meet this objective in the next five years, this is the time where the analysis happen, the calculations are happening to see how you can you can meet that goal. And then number four, identifying of suitable financial planning strategies and develop a financial plan that has recommendations and solutions. Now number four, if you, 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 you would notice where we are coming from, most start at this point. It doesn't begin with, this is the product and you must buy. It's never, financial planning process is never a sales pitch. You, you, you don't first have a product that a person must sign up to, but there is this understanding of knowing who the customer is. What are their objectives? 
what makes them up? You, you, there's a thorough analysis of the position of the client financially in, in their family, in career-wise, where are they? Only then you are able to make suitable financial planning re recommendations as solutions to what the client would like to achieve. And then number five, once all these uh, recommendations are made and solutions are presented, uh, the discussion then is to say, are these suitable for my life? Are these solutions for me? Do I buy into these recommendations? And, and at that point, uh, the client implements the recommendations. Now, now one can, can say everything, it builds up to you then saying, let me make an example. An analysis is done and you are creating, let's say, a document like a will. Point number five is to say the client implements. And that is where the client is saying the will has been drawn up, everything has been analyzed, and this is what I wish to do. This is where the client implements it by signing and taking up the will for safe custody. I want to stress this point. A lot of us happen to, to go through the financial planning process, but everything hinges on the implementation process. Many people have actually experienced uh, the, the unforeseen events, not because no one engaged them, but only because there was no implementation. Most people have passed on and there was a copy of an unsigned will. There was only one person sh short to do what? The implementation of the recommendations. And of course, this is a, a thorough uh, conversation that happens between yourself and the professional. You consult, consult, making sure that you reach understanding. So in the financial planning process, what you then get to see is you are actually buying advice more than you are buying a product. Just like you go see a doctor, what would they do? They would, they would put all these checks, do the whole analysis on your health. Similarly, the financial, pro, uh, the financial planning process is also a tool to check the state of your financial affairs. And you are given the, ne the necessary recommendations and solutions for you to go implement so that your financial health can be steady and good. If I may ask, are you healthy? Have you received a recommendation? Do you know what solutions you need? And then of course, after the sixth step, after all this has happened, you go and revisit, uh, you review the, the, these plans that were, that were put forward. Some people would say, we do it yearly, some people would say we do it uh, every, every time there's a change in my life situation. There are certain events in life that prompt for one to go revisit their financial plan. These are situations like getting married, getting divorced, uh, a birth of a child, buying new assets, changing a job, uh, maybe getting an illness. All these six that I've counted are actually events, and there are more, that a death of a spouse can also be a prompting uh, uh, invite for you to go revisit the financial plan. So one, in this financial planning process, it is not to say you do it once, you revisit it as and when there is a need. So, so that's why it's also important to have a financial planner who, who will then be available in the industry. Uh, unlike the, back in the days where someone was seen or they came in this town and you took up something, but they actually live elsewhere. It's a relationship that you have, just like with your doctor, just like with any other professional that services you. It's a lifelong so that they can be able to see through all these plans that you've put together. Now, one may ask, what, what, what does a financial plan address? 
uh, a, a solid financial plan will will just go through these six uh, parts of a financial plan. A solid financial plan will will address uh, this component. Maybe one, your financial management uh, will will go step by step. As I'm going through this, we'll go and talk to financial management in the next slides. And then a, a solid financial plan will also talk to your investment planning. What are your what are your investment goals? Uh, it will also talk to your risk planning. What risks am I likely to, to get and that I must be prepared for when it comes to my finances and my state of health? And then it will it would also address the retirement planning. Uh, and, and and that you do through your financial planner. And then it will talk to you, tax planning. A lot of people have got challenges with tax. You plan for that in a financial plan. And then, and then lastly, it talks to your estate planning. Don't, don't, be, don't be afraid. I will explain this in simpler terms as to what they are. Right, financial management talks to could talk to us drawing up a, a, a budget that one will be able to operate from. I know most of us we don't operate on a budget. We 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 really wing it. Uh, we wing it, but financial management will talk to us being aligned with the budget uh, and creating one and sticking to one and being able to manage it. And then it will talk to our cash flow issues and how we manage uh, our cash flows. Uh, financial management will also talk to, to debt uh, reduction and the amount of debt we are in. And most uh, South Africans, we know uh, a number of, of statistics is published yearly around the debt levels that we as South Africans are in. Uh, to an extent that on payday, most by the time they wake up, almost 60% of their income has already gone. And one can ask who has stolen my money. And we aren't able then to do uh, or commit to other things because of the debt levels that we actually have uh, incurred. So a financial management plan will also talk to how do I service the debt? How do I make sure that I manage it and how do I make sure that I'm able to take the acceptable limit of debt? And then a financial management, uh, the, the pillar will also talk to your short and medium cash flow goals uh, so that, I mean, we always talk about having an X amount in your basket. That's part of your financial management pillar that is addressed in your financial planning. Moving forward. Investment planning, it talks about your own investments, how you want to invest, what do you want to invest for? Uh, what are your goals when it comes to, to investment? Uh, we, in, in here, we talk about the, the types of investments, which is in the industry is called the asset classes. Uh, we could be talking about uh, investing in shares, in bonds, in, in in properties, I see we, we wrote shares twice there. But but all the type of asset classes that one can be able to invest in, that's what we would be talking about within the investment, the investment planning space, where we talk to what level of risk am I willing to accept? That is in the in the pillar. And of course. Managing the expectations of what ma the market will give you, the, the, the rate of the return. See, certain things, uh, one may not, an, a normal uh, layman may not be able to know, where do I invest? By the way, some people, even though we do have a, a lower investment savings culture, most people could possibly be that they are not investing, not because there's no, there's no desire to, but because they don't understand it. So, so you approach that financial planner to assist you in that journey of, of what you could be investing to, how you should be investing. And it's very important. Is the investment properly regulated? 
or uh, instead of us chasing all these other things that tomorrow come and you are told that you're going to get 100% within se- se- seven days and, and, and all those kinds of, 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 of things. But really, more than it, there's a, a whole host of, of, of planners, of professionals, of investment specialists that can be able to guide us uh, in this almost very scary investment journey to those who are not uh, really comfortable with that one. And then there's my next. Okay. And then the, the, the other pillar, risk management. Uh, risk, risk management could be talking to, to any risk. We all earn an income. And that income uh, is, is really can be affected by certain uh, uh, incidents that may happen to us. Think around if, if I had to be disabled tomorrow and I'm a specialist in a particular field, obviously that event will, will trigger or, or it will affect my income earnings potential. If I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, or I'm, I'm any professional, I'm in business, right? And I'm an engineer and I'm running an engineering business. Once I'm disabled and I can no longer offer that specialist skill, does my business not suffer because I can, I'm, I'm now uh, on a wheelchair and I can't do my work and be as effective as I was with all my, 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 my limbs? Uh, am I able to go to court? Am I able to report for duty uh, at, at, at my practice or at hospital or, or even at, at, at work in general? So there's a risk there, which can always, the financial planning process will take care of because it will make sure that there is a lump sum that is, 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 is going to be there in the plan that matches with covering and replacing your own income. We, we, we don't talk a lot about it where we say, uh, let's say, I, I, I would, let's say I'm, I'm dealing with a client which, which earns a million and above. We, we, let, let's be honest, we, we, we weren't always earning those amount of monies. And it is in our best interest to make sure that we protect and, and, and we know that whatever happens to us, we will still be able to, to earn that income. Because once we aren't able to, we're no longer professionals or business people, but life may still continue. Uh, the, financial process, the financial planning process then is not always about you dying. What if you don't die? Can we still plan around your life and your well-being, your financial well-being, when you are still alive. And some of the risks I've mentioned, there's disability, there's critical illness, issues like heart attack, stroke. Uh, We know it's prevalent now. Cancer, even with the younger ages, it's no longer issues of once you turn 40 and above. We are having young professionals now. Imagine yourself, you just started working, you've just qualified and you have 40 years of work ahead of you and you experience an event that will mean you can no longer be able to offer the professional services that you are qualified to do and you must still be uh, able to, 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 to provide for yourself and your family for the next 40 years until you are 60 or 65 when you retire. Have you then made that? So the financial planning process answers such uh, such eventualities. Number three uh, on the risk is, is retrenchment protection. We spoke a lot about, about retrenchment protections way, way before COVID, and most people were not opening up to it until it actually happened. When the markets closed and a lot of companies started laying off people, the SABC, uh, uh, we saw uh, the airline. What's the, the name of the airline? 
the South African one. SAA, SAA, because we don't really use SAA a lot. I forget about SAA, and a, and many other companies. You 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 will know a lot of people were retrenched immediately at that point. They had no salary. They they had to wait for their pension funds to pay out. But had there been planning for that risk, a person would have. They are an equivalent of their salary until they find another job, at least for a number of months. Income protection, I've mentioned, I think I've, I've spoken about that. Can you make sure that whatever happens to you, that your salary is, is, is secured right through until the time where you should be stopping working? Short-term insurance, this is stuff for vehicles, your assets. Many people have, have, have continued to pay for, for assets they no longer drive only because that insurance was not in place. That risk management, because because insurance mitigates the risk of loss to your own assets and then medical aid. Uh, I think, should I, should I really talk much about that? Maybe later when we talk about retirement, medical aid it will be one of the highest costs in when 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 you're no longer working when you retire so in the financial planning process how do we how do we cater for that need spend a lot of time on this one and then the retirement planning pillar most of us uh again many studies are done and the latest one uh was done by sunlam was it this year and it still reinforces what we all know. Most South Africans are not ready to retire based on, on, on what they are investing. When we start working, we always choose the minimum to contribute into our pension fund. Uh, so in that retirement planning, we will then be looking at how much are you earning today? And then factor in the, the increases over the years that you'll be working in. This is a discussion where you say, I want to retire at 55. Is there a plan for it? I want to retire at 60. Factor in those numbers. You do the calculations and say, today you are earning 10,000. By the time you retire, this is how much you'll be earning. Now let's come back and look at what you are investing. Well, what you are investing with it, its growth over the years, be able to provide this income that you'll be earning at that time? And will that income be able to last you for an amount of time? So, so, so a financial plan is, is actually, it's a lifetime plan. That's why it must be revisited frequently. And then, can I afford to retire? We've spoken to it. Most, most of us, if we are really open, can I afford to retire? Most people, based on the lowest culture of investing, we are we are, we can't. If if legislation allowed us, most people would still work over the age of sixty five. Unfortunately, at that age, you then take an income adjustment. So maybe it's always important in that discussion we talk about it. What does the retirement look like to me? Does it look like uh, I'll be taking holidays? Does it look like I'll still be shopping at Woolies? Or will I need to shop at another, another store, make life adjustments? What does retirement look like? What will I be driving? Uh, which Will I still be able to afford medical health care? What does retirement look like to you? We take the time really to plan for it and always revisit. When you're changing the jobs and say, oh, now my income has grown. Also, the income expectation when you retire is going to be higher and you always do those numbers and, and just adjust the plan. Withdrawal of pensions vessels, uh, transferring of preservation to, to a preservation fund or, or, or a retirement annuity product. Most of us, when we change jobs, we opt to cash the money. Uh, it's always interesting. These are decisions that you can really make with the assistance of a financial planner, especially if there's that financial plan. I, I, I had a client 
who was changing jobs to a higher job. And, and she needed to say, we, we were transferring the funds. And she was like, I would like to take about, say, 20 to, to, to 30,000 to paint my house. Like, okay, that's fine. Is that the withdrawal you'd like to do? And I was given the task, go do the calculations. We go, we do the calculations. If, we, if you withdraw the 20,000 today, this is possibly going to be the, the interest that you're going to use over to lose over the years. 20,000 today withdrawn to go paint the house. That possibly by the time you retire, that 20,000 will would, would have been worth 150,000. And we put the numbers in front of the client, and the client must make the decision. Do I want to paint with this 20,000 or do I just want to transfer my whole pension? Because because 20,000 by the time I retire will be equal to 150. All I'm saying is that type of thinking can only happen when you have a professional who is able to do the numbers for you and you are able to make sense of the numbers and make proper decisions based on the numbers. Numbers don't lie. We usually say tax planning. Tax planning is very important. And, and perhaps we think there's nothing we can do about our taxes. We think is we can just accept it, um, add a 36% uh, tax bracket, um, being taxed 45% uh, of my income. What can I do? There's a lot that one can do to minimize the income tax liability. And you do that in a legal way. There's a lot. And in that, one can work with a financial planner to minimize their, their taxes. I know we want to support uh, our government, our country, and, and all those things, but there are legal ways for us to, to reduce the amount of tax we are paying. And that is also to our benefit. These are allowed legally. You, you, when you're doing tax planning, you can you can talk to. Ex, look, let me let let me make, 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 make mention it in this way. Uh, dying is easy. Is 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 not easy. It's expensive. Dying is expensive. I repeat, dying is expensive. You don't stop paying taxes, and even at death, you pay taxes. Give you a state duty tax. I'll give you. Just a simple example, if you've got a house of a million rands, a state duty in your personal capacity is 20% of the value of your house. So if my house is 1 million and I die, the house is registered under my name. One of the taxes that I must pay when I'm dead is 200,000 for having a property that is registered on my name that is worth 1 million. It's one of the many costs that are involved at death. So in the financial planning process, other than just doing, uh, assisting with the taxes whilst you are alive, it is also a good process that will help to minimize the taxes and costs when you die. Maybe most people would be like, why do I care? I'm dead. They can just sort it out. You've worked so hard for all the assets that you have. And if you die with liabilities, those assets can be sold to recover monies that must be paid for taxes to executors, to transfer assets and other debts. So this process, if you don't go through it, it's a costly process whether you are alive or you are dead. And then, uh, of course, it always helps to talk to capital gains tax. I think I'm giving a very generic overview of what estate planning deals with. And, and for, for, for this segment, we're not really talking to each one in particular. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just worried. I'm not talking to my friends here who are, who are owning businesses because it also gets more complicated when we, 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 we deal with businesses, with business owners, tax planning is also, is also hitting businesses quite a lot. Whether we are talking company-owned policies, we, we are talking about 
the your own shares in a company when you when 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 you are no longer there there's a lot that one can do to make sure that one minimizes imagine someone who's now owning a business use a simple number your business is worth 10 million that is the value of your business it's under your name and you are dying and we 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 are winding up your whole process and we are calculating the taxes just on a 10 million value of a business 2 million in cash must be available but you can be able to plan for those through the financial planning process i think this is the last pillar and it's the estate planning and 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 really everything uh, we could have had this conversation and start with with estate planning and go and go back uh, where we could even talk about financial planning through a will and 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 go all the way back uh, but there's quite a lot involved when it comes to to estate planning and 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 one means to 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 really have a proper team that will look at their estate planning needs so so in the estate planning one can be exploring uh, the benefits and the use of a trust what 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 is a trust what are the benefits of using a trust for your for one's estate planning i think that on its own could be a session which we can talk to uh, and talk about the benefits the types of trusts and 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 how it is operated where a trust reports to uh, how it is created that on its own i know is a gray area a lot of people do not understand we can always unpack that but in 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 the estate planning process you, you, we use trusts a lot uh, the, 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 there's just worries. Maybe let me not digress, but there are issues where a lot of trusts aren't compliant. Uh, but at least there, you know, when you when you're using a trust, it it, it can vary. In, in the trust, you, there's a lot of control, even though you are no longer there, because there's a trust deed that clearly explains how everything must be managed must be controlled and especially if it's not a trading trust you are able to save a lot on those tax uh, liabilities that i had mentioned previously like the estate duty the estate duty the capital gains tax uh, I, I i just want to keep it simple trust we can always talk about uh, on, on on its own but it's a tool it's an instrument that we really use in the estate planning process for the betterment and the safeguard of the assets of a client okay the benefits we, we, we we've spoke, just briefly touched about that of course the will a will all these things must be documented somewhere gone are the days where we say no the last born will guide us as to what must happen with our parents uh, uh assets or who will the will will stipulate all your wishes as to how things should be done uh, i i i had a, a a client who was new in the faith of the adventist uh fold and and when she created a will i was so shocked she even specified on which day she wants to be buried because she is the only adventist person in the family and she knows that the family will want to bury her on Sabbath. She expressed that in her will to say, I want to be buried on any other day other than Sabbath. So there's a lot, I think, there as well. Because there we can we can extrapolate a lot of lessons. I, I, I like really giving information and teaching about financial planning and, and, and issues of 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 the within the financial services there's a lot that we can really talk about even to say who needs a will uh how it can be created what you know all those all those considerations but in the estate planning pillar of the financial planning process the will must is, is really a crown of it all where you document your wishes but what is important in your estate planning there needs to be money. I'll let I'll, I'll 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 let that land. When, whatever happens with our estate, 
there needs to be money. And I can tell you there are, there are, there are cheaper ways to make sure that we leave money behind. If we don't leave money behind, we've seen and we know the cheapest houses to buy are the ones where it's, it's under a deceased estate where someone has passed on. And as a result, we want to sell the property because monies must be recovered to make certain payments. That's the cheapest house to buy. So by, by not making sure that there's liquidity in one's estate, you are actually then all the assets you've worked so hard for, they get sold for less. Imagine someone with a house in Sentin. I see a lot as I drive here. Only because it's people who have not taken the financial process, financial planning process and, and completed it. We see them where says auction, deceased estate, and they are sold for less than their value. Of course, in your, when you do your estate planning, uh, you make sure that there's good governance of the estate. You, 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 you make sure whilst you are still alive, you can say you want so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so to be part of a vehicle that will manage all your assets. It is, it is possible. It is possible. Uh, and of course, we spoke to say estate planning, you will, you, you will definitely be looking at, at minimizing all the expenses and including the taxes because dying is really, really expensive. But the estate planning process uh, will really help us. And I think as 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 I close, I'm closing. Uh, I, I think we are very good with time. I'm I'm just I've just got a, a, a scripture on, in mind. Here is 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 a mother with two boys at home, and and she says it's in the Bible. It, it, she says, uh, "I have nothing, and the creditors they are coming to take my sons as slaves." Our, my husband has died and I have nothing to feed the family. Many families are no different to this family. It's just that we don't, it's not, it's not as out there as possible. But when one partner is no longer there, life really changes, not for the best. It really changes. And these creditors that were coming to fetch these boys, in this family, in the Bible, there was no estate planning. Dad didn't make sure that debts are paid. There's a plan. There's money left over. Uh, there's a will in place. There's money for education for the children. There's money to look after and replace his income and sort out all his other debts. There was no financial planning that was done in this family. As a result, we can only see that when the father is no longer there. Most families are in that predicament. They're only waiting for one partner not to be there for us to see that there is no financial planning in place. I encourage, as we look into our own stewardship, in our own uh, resources in in what we have been uh, entrusted with in the in the things that we've we've really worked so hard for. Let's take a keen interest to protect our own ability to keep on being able to earn and to to add onto our our asset base, so that we can be able to leave our society, our families, and all that is closer to us in a better, in a better, better situation. And we only can do that through, uh, through a financial planning process. Again, I think that's about it from my side. I wish you all of the best as you, 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 you synthesize and you think about this information. Uh, should anyone feel to want to ask questions, feel free. We are available 
And I thank you. Have a lovely Sabbath.